Hello and welcome to another filter grade tutorial. My name is Layden and in this video I'm going to give you some tips and show you my technique for how I edit GoPro Karma drone footage. Alright so I'll be using Adobe Premiere Pro today to be editing all my footage. This is what I prefer to edit in. I've already gone ahead and dumped a couple clips here into my project. I always make sure that my project settings are set to 1080p at 30 frames per second or 29.97 whatever that decimal is. I always make sure it's set to that, that way when I drop in 2.7k or 4k clips I'll be able to scale them up or down and use that actually as a technique in the editing process. Same with the frame rate, I usually shoot in 60 frames per second just in case anything crazy happens as I'm recording and then I can slow it down in post. All this footage is taken with the GoPro Hero 5 attached to the Karma drone. I always have ProTune on. If you don't shoot with ProTune on, I would highly recommend you turn that on. Even if you just do like simple basic adjustments on the settings, it's better than no ProTune at all. I believe the settings are ISO 800, white balance, I think it was 4800 Kelvin, sharpness low, and I have the auto shutter speed on just because oftentimes lighting condition changes and I want to make sure that my shots are all properly exposed. I also shoot with the linear field of view always. Unless I'm trying to take a photo, then I'll switch to the wide field of view. That way I can actually control the fisheye effect. If you shoot with this linear field of view, nobody can really tell that your footage is taken with a GoPro because it doesn't have that super wide angle look to it. And it looks a lot better when panning up and down, not creating this awkward curvature of the earth. Now another thing about ProTune is that you could also shoot in flat color. I always shoot in GoPro color just because oftentimes when I'm on trips, I want to get the footage off quickly and put it on Instagram or just throw together a quick video and I don't have a lot of time to color correct it. If I know ahead of time that the footage is going to be used for a bigger project, I will actually shoot in flat color. That gives me more options when recoloring the footage in editing. All right, so let's get into it. If you're like me, you take very long clips. Usually as soon as I'm in the air, I hit record and I leave it for a long time so these are just very large clips as you can see this one's like it's like six minutes long so the very first thing you want to do if the sound isn't already down or off you want to make sure that is gone so as you can see these clips the sound is already gone usually with the karma footage the audio file is separate which is a great feature so that you don't always have to go in and make sure that your audio is off so double check make sure on all any kind of drone footage really that your sound is off because no one wants to hear your rotors so to do that even though my audio is empty just right click on your clip and you can go down to where it says unlink, click unlink, then just simply click your audio file and delete it all together. Another quick tip here, when editing your footage, when you start to cut things up, always cut the clip before the movement or the shot is finished. So as you can see this clip right here, this it's slowly panning up, but you see it kind of jitters a bit when the panning reaches its max right there. So I'm gonna cut that, and I'm gonna find the beginning of the clip here. So let's just start that there. So like I said, I wanna cut it right before it actually stops moving. So right there, I'm gonna cut it, delete. So I'm not quite sure where I'm gonna use this in the actual project yet. I just wanna cut my individual shots. So for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna get rid of everything before that. And then I'm gonna move on to another clip of me kind of orbiting around this rock right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it there and then cut it here. I'm just going to get rid of this clip and then the one here as well. So one of the reasons why I always shoot in a higher quality than 1080p, so this video is actually taken in 2.7K, often I find that the gimbal is not perfectly level. So if you go back to the first shot we cut together, it's not quite straight. It's pretty close, but I've had some clips where it's just completely off. So I always shoot in 2.7K. That way I can double click on this clip here, change this to 25%. As you can see, my project settings have cropped in on the video and I've turned it into a 1080p view. So I can zoom out and get all this information back into the video, then just go back to fit, play it out. And there's so much more information and details in the water that weren't there before. So always double check on your clips to see maybe you shot it in 4k and you just didn't remember So again with this clip you can see all this information that we're not using but I'm gonna save that for a later technique another thing I want to talk about is the four second rule Which is a personal limitation. I've kind of put on myself just as I've seen videos across the internet You should never have a clip that exceeds four seconds if you have an unbelievable clip that the world just has to see You can make it four seconds or even more than that. But it would have to be a serious exception so this clip here, it's pretty long and it's definitely over four seconds. The four second rule essentially just means that your clip is too long and you're making it boring. And you don't want your viewers to sit and watch the same thing for a longer period of time just because you found it so fascinating that you actually took this video yourself. So let's just find the best parts of this clip. 
try to keep one fluid movement the entire time. So it looks like it's more of a slider shot that turns into an orbit right about here. So I'm just gonna go ahead, I'm gonna cut this there. So as far as the shot goes, that's great. The movement looks good, but it's still a little bit too long. This is where you can apply another technique, which is retiming your videos. I shot this in 60 frames, meaning that I could slow it down and it would still look okay. But in this case, I want to speed it up. You always need to be careful when you are changing the time or reversing the clip whenever you're close to water and there's waves because it looks very unnatural and people pick that up and know that you're kind of cheating and you filmed it differently. This clip doesn't have any obvious waves crashing in and there's no birds flying through the scene giving away that the shot is being sped up. I'm just going to hit the R button on my key which changes the time duration. I'm just going to bring it down to about there. So it's just over four seconds. I'm going to bring it down a little bit more, even faster. I think that looks good. So I'm going to throw that together with this clip over here. This one's a little bit long as well. I am going to speed this clip up a little bit, not too much, just because there are seagulls flying and there's waves crashing. People will pick up that the clip is sped up a little bit too much. And again, this clip is over four seconds. So I'm going to cut it there and I'm going to speed this part up quickly. Part where there's really no birds or waves crashing. It's just the panning up. Might just cut the beginning off a little bit there because you don't really need it. So I'm going to leave those two there. I'm going to move on to another video that I took at sunset. So this brings up an important point. You need to be careful whenever you're panning up and down where there was a bright sky and a darker foreground or just or just a normally lit landscape. As most consumer drones have very small sensors in them and their metering modes aren't the greatest. So if I pan up or pan down, you're going to see the foreground change brightness in the background, change in brightness as well. As I'm panning down, the ground is getting much brighter and exposure changes completely. What essentially this means is that I probably just won't use this clip of the panning down. It's not a great clip to begin with, but I just try to avoid those types of shots. There are ways of getting around it if you do some clever cutting and recoloring, but personally I just try to avoid it altogether. Let's just try to find some context in this shot. Maybe find try to find some cars or some people or any other any other thing that would help your viewer kind of gain a sense of scale. So again, like I mentioned before, try to cut as things are moving and before it stops and try to keep the movement the same throughout the entire clip. All right, so there it stops. I'm going to use this clip here. So the pullback shot is cool, but I don't really have a lot of interesting elements that I'm introducing. They're all just trees. I'm actually gonna reverse this clip so that it looks like I'm coming up on the cars in the parking lot, and that will kind of change the viewer's perspective and really get a sense of scale. So make sure you clicked on the clip, right click, and you're gonna go down to speed duration. And under these options, you can actually hit reverse speed right here. Hit okay. So there we go, it's changed my clip around. Now it looks like I'm flying towards the parking lot. So this is a rather slow clip. You hit the R key and speed things up a little bit more. You can always add a warp stabilizer if the movement is a little too jittery. All right, so another technique I'm going to talk about is kind of one of the reasons why I shoot in a higher quality, knowing that I'm gonna export for a 1080p video. You can actually do a digital zoom in editing just to add another element of interest into the video, kind of creating the dolly zoom effect if you've ever seen that, which is a popular cinematography technique. So here you want to make sure that your effect controls are up here in the top left panel. I'm going to go from zoomed in to zoom out. So start this clip. I want to go to the very beginning and I'm going to hit the scale button, the stopwatch. That's going to add a keyframe for my scale. And at the very end of the clip, I want to do the same, but add a keyframe using this button here. I'm going to put this keyframe here where we can see it and then I'm I'm going to move to the very end of the clip once we're done changing the scale. So where it has this number value here, you can actually click and drag to the left and you can zoom out. You want to get to the point just before you see the edge of the video. So there we go. I've done that. I'm going to move the keyframe over to the far right, which is the very last frame. And if you play it out, there's actually kind of a parallax effect, giving a little bit more interest. So as the clip plays, you're slowly zooming out, but it feels like you're zooming into the trees. And I might actually just cut this clip even more. Don't think I'd be able to use this little camera movement at the very end. And it adds almost a bit of mystery as the camera is kind of pulling you in to see something and then just cut away to something different. Now this is not a normal project. Usually I'd intercut this with regular footage on the ground as well as kind of give more context with other drone shots, but that's more for a larger project or a travel video. So here I've got another one We're flying along a road and right here you can see the horizon is definitely not straight. So again, this is why I shoot in a higher quality, it's shot in 2.7K as well. So same thing, I'm gonna double click on this here. Make sure that you have this to 25% or 10% if it's a larger clip, just so that you can see the edges. And then from here, you want to just rotate it however you need to. And you can zoom back into 50 if you want. It's not quite there yet. Let's go back up to 25. 
Tilt it a little bit more. All right, that's good enough. It looks like it may not be 100%. Something you also have to watch out for is that I find that if the camera turns as we've gone the other direction, our corrections are totally off. So you can just fix this by cutting the clip every once in a while and making sure that each shot has a straight horizon in it. It's a bit more time consuming, but if you shot in 1080p and your project is in 1080p, you're not gonna have the ability to just simply correct it like I just did. You're gonna have to zoom in a bit more, compromising some of the quality of the video. All right, so as I play through, I'm gonna take this shot of these cars driving across the road. Just gotta find a point where there's not a lot of jittering and one consistent movement. So I kinda want this to be a shorter clip and just remember the four second rule that I mentioned before. When it comes to drone footage, less is more. This clip doesn't actually have the horizon visible, so we don't need to worry too much about keeping it straight. However, we don't want to have an unrealistic road. And you can apply the same scaling technique that I did before, whether you want to go left to right. I just find that a zooming in and zooming out tends to be more subtle and it kind of just makes your brain more attentive as to what's going on. So for this video, I'm going to use another scaling technique. I'm going to start the keyframe at the beginning. So I put a keyframe at the end and at the beginning. For this technique, we're going to be zooming in. So you don't need to change the last keyframe, but you will need to change the first keyframe. Again, just scale it out while clicked on that first keyframe until you start seeing the black outline. We play it through. It almost looks like a helicopter shot of a car commercial you've probably seen. And you can also change where you want the zoom to finish. So you wanted to zoom in and then just follow the cars. You can move the keyframe up. If you want to transition from going from a fast zoom into a slow zoom, all you have to do is add another keyframe with this button here and then move the scale up to about maybe 95. So we play it out. It's still a bit jittery. We can fix that by adding another keyframe. You can spend as long as you want on this adding keyframes, making it seem more smooth, zooming in and out, going right to left. All right, so I'm satisfied with that clip. Let's just throw them all together real quick. So this is a very fast paced video. A little bit too much movement actually at the beginning here with the zoom out and zoom in. This is where I'd intercut with some more footage in between here of just some stable kind of b-roll shot on the ground. So lastly I'm going to color correct these videos really quickly. So I'm gonna go up to the top and hit window and I'm gonna open my Lumetri color. And if I'm editing for a travel video or general GoPro drone shots, I like to use LUTs. So under creative, where it says look, you can select. I'm actually going to browse and add one of my own LUTs that I've created. So I'm going to go ahead and use my Irish Coast LUT, just because this was shot in Ireland, and you might as well. And I do like the soft blue in the sky rather than kind of that dark purple. I'm going to bring down the intensity a little bit just because I want to keep it looking dramatic. I'm going to go back to my basic corrections and with these small sensors there's not a lot of capability of capturing and metering for highlights and shadows so you're probably going to have to manipulate this in post. So I'm going to bring down my highlights pretty far here just about to the bottom. Bring up my shadows just so I can see the foreground a bit more. Add some more contrast in the whites and I'm going to bring them up a tiny bit and for the blacks I'm going to bring them up a little bit as well. Also kind of gives it a soft shadow. I'm going to skip the saturation here and go into creative and bring up the vibrance. GoPro footage is known to be very vibrant, so I'm going to keep that going. Just a nice simple correction there, bringing out more detail and highlights and shadows. I actually go more in depth of how I color grade for a cinematic look as well as how I just personally color grade in my workflow in previous videos. So you can go ahead and check those out. But for the sake of drone footage, I just want to make sure that my exposure is correct and throw a LUT on there that I'm happy with. So for this clip, let's add another LUT. It's a green space, so I want to keep that looking vibrant. I'm going to throw this simple daylight LUT on there. Kind of adds a bit of a teal and orange look to it. Bring down the intensity just a little bit. I rarely ever keep my intensity at 100% whenever I use LUTs just because I want to add my own flair to it and I don't want all my clips looking the exact same. So I'm going to sharpen this one up a little bit and increase the vibrance. Go back to my basic correction. I'm going to decrease the blacks just to get more contrast as well as add contrast. Maybe bring the exposure up to correct what we did in the blacks. If you're not shooting into the sun or you have a lot of sky in your video, you don't need to do extensive shadow and highlight repair because there is less for the sensor to meter for. For this one, you can see there's a lot of bright rocks. Sky is bright. The shot may be a little bit overexposed. So let's go back into the creative, pick up a LUT. I'm going to use the Irish Coast LUT again. Try to keep the LUT styles similar or consistent clip to clip. Kind of got the underlying theme of soft blue in the shadows in all these clips here. Like I said before, bring down the intensity. That's just my personal preference. And I'm going to go back up to the basic. More contrast, less highlights. Bring up the whites, down the blacks a little bit. 
There isn't a lot of shadows in this clip, so I'm not going to move it around too much. All right, that looks good to me. So let's go on to the last two here. Something I haven't mentioned is whenever you're color grading, you should, you should always have an adjustment layer that you edit on instead of editing on the actual video clip itself. It doesn't matter too much in this case. But when you have clips that have been split, this is where the adjustment layer comes in handy. So editing on this adjustment layer, I'm going to find another LUT. This one's heavy on the blue, so I'm going to use the Irish Coast LUT on this clip just because I used it in the clip before and it's actually the same location. Bring down the intensity, sharpen the details up a bit, add more vibrance. Not too much, don't want to go completely insane. Don't want to make this scene look extremely colorful. So as you can see, it's kind of overexposed here on some of the rocks and in the waves. So I'm going to bring the highlights down. Leave the shadows where they are since there really isn't any shadows or detail that needs to be brought out. Bring in the blacks just to add a bit more contrast as well. Bring up the whites to keep things bright. I'm just kind of editing on the fly here. It really depends on what your scene looks like, especially for drone footage. These shots can be completely different and unlike anything you've shot on the ground, especially with the ability to see so much sky and to see the earth from a different perspective and lit completely different than what you might be seeing on the ground. All right, so there you go. That's how I edit and color some of my drone footage. Lastly, I'm just gonna export this and show you how I do it. All right, so let's go up to the top, export, media, rename it. I'm saving it to an external hard drive just because my Mac is almost full. Down here under the video codec, I have a Mac, so I actually have the ability to choose Apple ProRes. I usually go with 422. Sometimes I do HQ. My go-to is always Apple ProRes 422. Then you wanna hit match source. That way it automatically adjusts to what your project was, setting it to 1080p. Make sure that your source range is sequence in out and that you have your whole timeline here. And then I don't usually hit export, but I hit Q. That way it brings up my media encoder and just does a better job of exporting and including all the data in the video itself. So I hit Q, it's gonna bring up my media encoder. Project's gonna pop up right here. All you have to do is hit the screen play button, click it, and it's gonna export your video on the bottom of the screen and show up wherever you told it to. So in this case, it's gonna show up on my hard drive. And there you are, that's how I edit my GoPro Karma footage, whether it's cutting, putting together in a timeline, or recoloring. This is a basic quick overview of how I go about doing it. And as always, for the best Photoshop actions, Lightroom presets, Capture One styles, and video LUTs, check out filtergrade.com.